The 1960s had a lot of remarkable moments, and while some might have been bad, others turned out to be pretty good for everyone who experienced it. One thing that was quite peculiar about the 1980s was the outfits worn at the time. The 1960s had its own trendy fashion, and we will be looking at that in this video. Welcome back to the America's Trip Down Memory Lane channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the teen fashion choices of the 1960s. Many youngsters would probably have the wrong idea of what teen fashion was like in the 1960s, and whatever is going through your head is probably not what you will see. For those who lived through the 1960s, this will be like a trip down memory lane as you remember some of these outfits and the atrocities you caused in them. The Early 1960s For most women who lived through the decade, American fashion in the early 1960s reflected the elegance of the then First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy. Besides tailored skirts, many women wore suits with short, boxy jackets and oversized buttons with stiletto heel shoes. Simple geometric dresses, popularly known as shifts, were also in style. And for evening wear, women in the early 1960s wore full-skirted evening gowns, which often had low necklines and close-fitting waists. Capri trousers were the fashion for many women and girls for casual wear. The two-piece swimsuit known as the bikini was invented in France in 1946, but had a lot of issues getting accepted in the mass market during the 1950s, especially in America. However, the early 60s were different as the bikini finally had a breakthrough when large versions featured in the surprise hit teen film Beach Party, concluding with the beach party film genre. The early 1960s gave rise to a new age of women's fashion and the birth of drainpipe jeans and Capri pants. A style popularized by Audrey Hepburn came to a realization. Casual dresses became increasingly unisex and often involved plaid button-down shirts worn with slim blue jeans, convertible slacks or skirts. Conventionally, Western society often viewed trousers as masculine, but as the 1960s rolled in, it had become traditionally acceptable for women to wear them every day. Women's trousers came in a variety of styles. They were either wide, narrow, above the ankle, below the knee, or ultimately mid-thigh. Mid-thigh cut trousers, otherwise known as shorts, evolved around 1969. By adapting men's style and wearing trousers, women voiced their equality with men. Male fashion was a lot different from female fashion in the 1960s. Around the house, teenage boys of the 60s wore styles quite similar to what modern-day teens wear. They had just begun to wear jeans known as dungarees in the mid to late 50s, and they also wore corduroys and khakis. They wore them with t-shirts, sweatshirts, or short sleeve cotton button-downs. For much of the decade, casual clothes were solid colors or basic patterns, such as plaids or stripes. Boys wore their pants cut straight or even narrow. Those are for casual wear and when teenage boys and men needed to step it up by looking professional, they wore dress pants, often in wool or polyester, along with a long sleeve button-down shirt, a tie, and often a jacket, especially when they went to school, church, or social outings. The general rule was that boys could not wear pants with seams stitched on the outside. This is a good example of how quickly styles changed. Tuxedos were cut in a form-fitting style with shawl collars and just one button and were available either in the traditional black or in the bright colors such as red or sky blue promoted by Frankie Valley of the Four Seasons. Men's hats, including the pork pie hat and Irish hat, had narrower brims that the Homburgs and Fedoras worn in the 1950s and earlier. Ivy League fashion was desirable casual wear for middle-class adults in America during the early to mid-1960s. The regular outfits comprised of striped t-shirts, polo shirts, khaki chino pants, argyle socks, Harrington jackets, seersucker or houndstooth sports coats, cardigan sweaters, sweater vests, Nantucket reds, basket weave loafers, madras plaid shirts, and narrow brimmed trilbies, sometimes made from straw. The mid-1960s The space age fashion first appeared in the late 1950s and developed further in the 1960s. It was deeply influenced by the space race and popular science fiction books, films, and TV series such as Star Trek, the original series, Dan Dare, or Lost in Space. The space age look was defined by boxy shapes, thigh-length hemlines, and bold accessories. Synthetic material was also popular with space age fashion designers. Short plastic raincoats, colorful swing coats, bubble dresses, helmet-like hats, and dyed fake furs were popular daytime outwear for young women. And in 1966, the Nehru jacket came on the fashion scene and was worn by both sexes. 
Suits were also very diverse in color but were fitted and very slim. The miniskirt also came into the fashion scene around this time, and it originally appeared in science fiction films like Flight to Mars and Forbidden Planet during the 1950s. During the mid-1960s, mod girls wore pretty short miniskirts, tall, brightly colored go-go boots, monochromatic geometric print patterns such as houndstooth, and tight-fitted sleeveless tunics. Flared trousers and bell bottoms also appeared in 1964 as an alternative to Capri pants and directed the way to the hippie period introduced in the 1960s. Bell bottoms were usually worn with chiffon blouses, polo necked ribbed sweaters, or tops that bared the midriff. Footwear for young women included kitten heeled pumps, low heeled sandals, and trendy white go go boots. Shoes, boots, and handbags were usually made of patent leather or vinyl. Male fashion also had a bit of change around this period. In America and Australia, surf rock went mainstream between 1962 and 1966, resulting in many teenage baby boomers emulating the outfits of groups like the Beach Boys. This led to the rise of Pendleton jackets, which were common due to their cheapness, warmth, and durability. Pendleton plaid, initially worn by loggers, hunters, and fishermen, was a common item of casual wear for American men of all classes prior to the British invasion. For the 1960s youth, however, the plaid Pendleton indicated counterculture and tribal seaman style translated from Welsh folklore, rebellious Scots Highlanders, and rugged American frontiersmen. The late 1960s The later part of the decade changed women's fashion and even led to the rise of many teenage subcultures. Starting in 1967, youth culture transformed musically and mod culture shifted to a more laid-back hippie or bohemian style. Ponchos, polka dot printed fabrics, love beads, mocassins, medallion necklaces, peace signs, chain belts, and long puffed bubble sleeves were famous in the late 1960s. Both men and women wore frayed bell bottom jeans, work shirts, tie dyed shirts, Jesus sandals, and headbands. Women would often go barefoot, and some were braless. Fringed buckskin vests, flowing caftans, and the lounging or hostess pajamas were also pretty prevalent at the time. Hostess pajamas comprised of a tunic top over floor-length culottes, typically made from polyester or chiffon. Long maxi coats, often belted and lined in sheepskin, were seen at the close of the decade, and animal prints became popular for many women in the autumn and winter of 1969. Women's shirts usually had transparent sleeves and psychedelic prints. Hemp and the look of Woodstock also appeared during this era. For men, things were somewhat similar in terms of changing fashion. The late 1960s to early 1970s saw the emergence of the hippie counterculture and freak scene in America and many other countries. Middle-class youths of both sexes preferred a unisex look with long hair, tie-dye, and flower power motives. Bob Dylan caps, kurtas, hemp waistcoats, baja jackets, bell bottoms, sheepskin vests, western shirts, and ponchos inspired by acid westerns, sandals, digger hats, and patches featuring flowers or peace symbols. In 1968, the Space Age mod fashions had been steadily replaced by Victorian, Edwardian, and Belle Epoque influenced styles, with men wearing double breasted suits of crushed velvet or striped patterns, brocade waistcoats, and shirts with frilled collars. Due to the colorful nature of menswear, the period was described as the Peacock Revolution, and male trendsetters in Britain and America were called dandies, dudes, or peacocks. Hairstyles in the 1960s Women's hairstyles ranged from beehive hairdos in the early 1960s to the very short styles promoted by Twiggy and Mia Farrow just after five years to a very long straight style as promoted by the hippies in the late 60s. During the mid and late 1960s, women's hairstyles were huge and used a huge quantity of hairspray. Wigs became more fashionable and were often worn to add height and style. During the early to mid-60s, rebellious Italian-American, Irish-American, and Hispanic teens, influenced by the greaser subculture, usually wore ducktails, pompadours, and quiffs. Due to the influence of mod bands like the Beatles, mop-top hairstyles were quite popular for white and Hispanic men during the mid-60s. Head coverings also changed towards the end of the 1960s as men's hats were replaced by the bandana, digger hat, Stetson, or Bob Dylan cap. The afro also served as the hairstyle of choice for African Americans as a way of accepting their racial identities. 
the 1960s was a really interesting time for fashion, and as it changed over the decade, way cooler outfits kept being introduced to teens and adults. Thank you for watching this video, hit us up in the comments section and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Also don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.